Hey, this is YBR, and I wanted to show you Automation, the Car Company Tycoon game. Now, before we do anything at all in this game, I want you to know where it is in the development cycle. So what you're seeing right here right now is an early work-in-progress beta build of the game. It is by no means the final version of the game. In fact, it doesn't even have any tycoon elements in it yet. It does, however, have all the tools you would really need to really go into depth and create a car quite detailed from the ground up. And I've just been using those and playing around with those, and I've dumped hours upon hours into it just messing with those things. So I just want you guys to know, you know, it is not the final version of the game. The developers are working out all the time. They actually have a live stream where you can watch them as they're developing, which is kind of funny. So you can be like watching them, like, ooh, look at them making that game and stuff. And um, they also seem like they're pushing out changes quite often. Like there was an update for just last week, and a few weeks before that, there was a pretty big update. So I just want to give you some background information. Now, what is Automation, the car company tycoon game? Well, a lot of the games I play are like the simulation... Uh, this is the simulation of the disassembly of a car by brute force. This is the exact opposite. It's a simulation of the assembly of a car in a scientific manner. So let's look at what there is, okay? We got campaigns, multiplayer scenarios, and sandbox. So we're going to go, we're gonna go a little bit out of order because it just makes a little more sense if we do that. So we're going to start in scenarios. Alright, so as you see right here, there are about six different things you could choose from, most of which are going and talking about engines. One is building a whole car. First, I want to go to the tutorials and talk about those, because if you don't know much about piston engines, it's really important how the game kind of teaches you this. And I just want to say, they did a decent job for that, because, you know, I'm coming into this like, man, I don't care about no pistons. I got an RX-7 and an RX-8. Those don't have pistons. You know, it's like, who needs pistons? I got rotors. I got my 13Bs. They've been so happy. They've been great for me, you know? But anyway, so I, had to, I came into this really not knowing much at all about piston engines. So... I just want to show you guys kind of how how they teach you things. So let's here's the first one. Where basically it gives you a little story. It's um there's an engine that already works great on higher quality fuel, and now you're exporting it to another country, and it works terrible on their low quality fuel. So th they're gonna show, you, and then so you got to make the engine work on the low quality fuel. And the game slowly teaches you things. So we'll start off like this. You see, okay, you can't click anything here, and they limit what you can click depending on the tutorial range. So you you know it you don't get overloaded with things. But um, the thing I really want to show you is the videos. If you click on any section, the first time you click it, a video will pop up that explains it. And I want you to be able to watch one of the videos, just one of them, so you kind of get an idea of what they are. So I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic, and you might have to turn the volume up a bit to be able to hear them. But I'm going to go ahead and run the video that's for compression. Compression describes the ratio at which the fuel-air mixture is compressed from the volume at the bottom of the intake stroke to the volume at the top of the compression stroke. More compression lets you extract more energy from the same amount of fuel, gaining you power for free. But there are a couple of serious trade-offs. Higher compression will cause a hotter burn of the fuel-air mixture. This increases the engine's output of harmful nitrogen oxides, NOx, although the effect can be counteracted by the use of a three-way catalytic converter. The hotter temperatures can also cause premature ignition of the fuel-air mixture, this is known as knocking and can be very damaging and destructive to the engine. Higher octane fuels are more resistant to knocking, thus many highly tuned engines require premium fuels with high octane ratings. Okay, I'm talking quiet so you can lower your volume. I'm going to talk louder soon. Okay. Hopefully I'm not blowing your ears out now. <laughs> but they have one of those for most of the sections, you know, like you see here, there's head and valve, head material, cam profile. You know, there's one of those for each and you see there's about five different things for this page that are related so they got one for most of the different things it seems like a few of them a few things might not have one yet but, but it seems like almost everything has something though you know, I think there might be like a few things that don't but most do uh, actually they might all do I don't know for sure I can't recall maybe they all do anyways though so let's go ahead and look at this though so let's look at the engine let's just look at the engine because these are the engines you build them you choose everything about them that's one of the things here you choose everything so you can be like even the even the pointless things like what color do you want it to be? I want it to be orange. What style do you want on the top? These affect nothing on the performance at all. It's just which do you think look coolest? And then I'll, you could also do this little slider here. Where it's like ooh, ooh, look at that. Ooh, you could take it apart like piece by piece to see it, and you could actually watch it run in any of these stages. So that's that's cool. I just wanted to point that out. Now, actually building an engine. This one. You got a base engine, like I said, so it's it's not too bad. So you go ahead and run it once, just to kind of get a baseline. You get to you know watch it run, and like I said, it's cool to be able to see you see it running with only you know with parts missing. You can just see straight through them. 
And that's just, I don't know if it actually serves any purpose when you're testing besides looking cool when you do stuff like this. But I like doing that. So you see anyways right there, you actually see, what, see when the fuel cutoff is, which is cool too. Um, but there you go, it tells you like just a little thing about the engine. It says it's knocking and reducing its MTBF for mean time between failures, and you should try lowering the compression. So okay, you're going to go ahead and do that. So we're going to just go over here and say, compression, you go to 6. And that's making it really low compression. You can actually see though, on the... You can actually see right there. Look real closely, okay? You can see how when you lower and raise the compression, it changes the shape. I thought that was neat, you know? Like, ooh, whoop. You know, I don't think I've ever seen any that look like that before. That looks, you know, I've never seen cars that run at that high compression. You know, that's the thing. I, well, I've never seen anything really with piston hinges, to be honest. And so that's not really a fair, I'm not a fair person to say that. But anyways, you would lower the compression. You could do another run. And you go ahead and let's zoom out a bit. And you can see, you don't have to wait for it to do the run. You can just hit skip and it gives you the dyno graph. And it's like, okay, it's no longer knocking. And you can see the fuel octane rating is 78. For this, we need to run on low quality unleaded, which is 80. So this thing should run perfectly fine right now. However, we still need to make more power. And like I said, the game eases you into things. So you only have a few things you can modify at this point. Later on, you'll be able to modify everything. And then you'll... You'll overwhelm yourself if you just jump into it. At least that's what I did. And then I just spent hours just clicking every button and eventually figured things out. And then I came back to the tutorials and did those after. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> just don't. It's a dumb idea. So we're going to do this. We're going to increase the fuel mixture. And then we're going to also increase the compression. And you see, each time you click on something, it gives you just a quick breakdown, you know? Quick breakdowns. They're useful. Because just in case you ever forget. And also, when you're learning, it's easy to forget things. And then if you fail too many times in a row, it's like, here's some tips. I got this. You know, don't worry about me. Why you worry about me? I don't, I'm fine, man. Don't worry. We, you see, we could, uh, we could go ahead and say, cam profile, make it race cams. Why? Because we can. And there we go. That's a bronze ranking. By no means a great rank. But then you could go ahead and keep tweaking things. You could be like, what if we ran the fuel mixture a little more rich and st and instead and you could do a test and you see okay it's even better now because on this one it doesn't matter how eco economic it is you could just dump fuel in it as long as you're not flooding the engine you're good to go uh, later ones you can't do that you actually gotta be concerned about things like that like oh we gotta you know not do this because this will go up this one is just teaching you slowly and then you go to the next one and the next one and the next one and they each have a little story with them and you, you can go ahead and do them I got platinum on most of them, gold on a couple, and this one used to be platinum until I did this video and made it bronze. Kind of weird that they don't save the best one and instead they just save the last one, but whatever. So that is how the game teaches you things. Now I'm not going to go at, go through all of these because, you know, I, you could do that. Um, I'm just showing you what the game is. So let's let's go to a hard one, okay? Let's go to the, yeah, let's go here. So general is... I guess any engine type you want to make. So we're going to just, uh, let's do one that's brutal. The Kazakh sports car. So this one says, a year ago your company built a fuel gurgling taxi for the, oh my goodness. That's what we just did in the, oh my goodness. That's awesome. The coincidental connection. I don't know how connected things are. It didn't seem like it was that much in the other, earlier ones, but this one's talking about the taxi engine we just were mess messing around with. That one was for a taxi, by the way. I didn't mention that, did I? Uh, anyways, now the portfolio is about to expand, and your superiors want to create a cheap sports car for the very same market. Remember, though, the engine must have reasonable mean time between failures, MTBF, power, cost, economy, size, as well as service costs. Also, it has to run on crappy fuel, and its exhaust needs the smell of unicorn farts, unlike the taxis. So there you go. You got little, little storylines. I think one of the best storylines, actually, real quick, is this one. Bargain booster. You just got your driver's license as well as your first car, which is quite a bargain, but it lacks power, that's for sure. So why don't you spend all the money you saved on a turbocharger? That's just funny, you know? And it says, don't destroy that engine. Don't turn into a ga gas guzzler is what your dad warned you. That's just funny. Like, this, they, they got good little stories for things, you know? So anyways, let's 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 do this one. This one, I think we're going to have to build an engine from the, the ground up, basically, okay? So we're going to go ahead and start... What we, I'll just show you like the process I would use basically to build an engine so you can just see how detailed things get so first you gotta pick an engine block we're gonna use a we'll use an inline six because we only need to make 190 horsepower V8 probably would also work and um, there there are plans to have everything from like an I3 to an, a V12 basically but right now it's kind of limited with just V8s and I4s and I6s and I think if you pre-order the more expensive kind you get another engine type or something 
Uh, I'm not sure on that. You can look at the website for that. But anyways, so you can choose the engine block type, and then you choose the cylinders. You can choose the material it's made out of. In this case, we're just going to choose the cheapest, which would be cast iron. No. Wait, yes, cast iron. Yes, sorry. I misread the uh, one for aluminum. So we're going to use a cast iron. We're not going to touch the bore and the stroke yet. We'll come back to that later, because those ones are, for, for me, something I usually change later. I mean, it's backwards from how you do it in real life, but... That's because you can't do that in real life, you know? So then for the crank, we're going to say, let's just use cast iron because it's probably going to be the cheapest thing again. Sometimes the top one is not necessarily the cheapest one. So this one, we're going to use cast again because it's the cheapest again. And then cast on the pistons as well. So conrods, pistons, all that's cast. Now I like how it slowly builds up the engine. So if you're like, what is a conrod? And you click it, it's like, oh, that's a conrod. So even if you like forget ever, there's also, like I said, the videos. But I'm just like... The cues they have to help you learn are some, one of those things that could have really been overlooked or done poorly. But the way it, it is, it's just like it's, it's really, I feel like that's one of the things I really appreciate about the game in its current state. It's just how, how it teaches you things without being in your face about anything too much, you know? Um, anyways, you know, the only thing that's in the face is that one where it says like, hey, you should try these things. That one's like, yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, but aside from that, I really like the way they teach you things. And that one's probably needed for some of the more what people you know the ones who like I don't want to watch this video you know <laughs> that's probably why they have it but anyways so we're gonna go ahead and keep making things as cheap as possible and you see like I said earlier a push rod is actually more expensive than a direct over a direct acting overhead cam so we're gonna use that cast iron is cheapest I know it is because it just is we're not gonna touch the compression the cam profile or any of that we're not gonna have VVT or VVL those are just it's just variable variable valve timing and variable valve stuff basically VTEC yo that's if you I mean if you don't know much about engines that's what it is you could also put a turbo on it and you could customize that all you want you could choose the, all kinds of stuff about it we're not gonna use a turbo for this engine because it's just a little too costly I would think you know we only need 190 horsepower if we were doing a four banger maybe we could throw on a turbo but with crappy gas and not that much money we're gonna not use a turbo next is the fuel system so you could do carburetor or injection and if you pick a carburetor, it says this is the max horsepower it can make. This is, you know, it gives you stats about it. And you see this one only make 165 horsepower. So you're going to want maybe a four-barrel one. So we'll go ahead and put the four-barrel one on it. Then we're going to do intake. you got standard, performance, which is kind of like what you would generally see on old muscle cars, you know. And then you got race, which is just a giant gaping hole with no filter at all. Look at that. <laughs> That's crazy. We're going to use standard for now. Well, actually, yeah, we'll use standard. Just keeping everything basic and cheap. We're going to use low quality on leaded because it's needed up here. You'll make sure all this. We'll come back to it later. We're just getting an engine that'll run. So then you got the headers type. And you can see, if you go over here, it should be up. You can see you can, you can see how it changes. And then you got race tubular, which is like, yeah, I want that on my car. But this isn't ma my car. This is made to be an actual logical car. You see, this one maxes out 114 horsepower. So let's use a short cast. Which just has a little bit higher horsepower rating. And then exhaust diameter, you can change that too. You can make a fat exhaust. I don't know if you can actually see that yet, really, can you? No, you can't see that, okay. Oh well. I didn't know that. I didn't know there we go, now you can see it. You can see it in the non existent catalytic converter and the first muffler and then the second muffler. So it doesn't get thicker until it gets to the catalytic converter. I I just wasn't I just didn't even notice that. But you can make it like huge or you can make it small. See, but like, I want a six inch exhaust because I'm making my Honda Civic go faster. And that's a funny thing. You can put a big exhaust on something that actually lowers the horsepower. Then you can go ahead and do it a run and see if it'll keep running. Uh, I'm thinking it probably won't because it's just such bad gas. Yeah. So you see, again, the fuel octane rating is a 98.9. I made a, a stupidly high performance engine. So, what we're going to do is we're going to. Lower the compression a ton. Let's just lower it all the way to six. Well, yeah, six. And that'll at least get the engine running. So let's, let's just get one run through. And we'll change the exhaust later. I just wanted to put like a six inch exhaust on it just because it looks so absurd. So that time it ran and it didn't die. That's good. And we got all the stats and stuff. And I didn't mention this earlier, but it color codes things, so you can tell which stats got better and which stats got worse. You know, it's like this one, the economy went up, this one up, this one up, but responsiveness went down. See, it's not actually a good idea to put a bad exhaust on your car generally. You see that? You put a two inch, well, you need one that's about maybe 2.5 inches for the amount of power this one's making. And then it'll have better stats. 
See? Everything is better. Why would you put a big exhaust on your Honda Civic when it makes everything about it worse? Uh, it's just funny, you know? Um, anyways, let's, uh, let's go ahead and make, let's get this, let's get this engine up to spec. We need a lot more power, a lot more reliability, a lot more economy. So, um, let's see, how should we get more power? There's a few ways you could do it, actually. And, I, oh, by the way, for the mufflers and stuff, I just put none because there wasn't any requirements to have one, actually. Uh, anyways, though, so how are we going to do that? Well, we could put the fuel mixture up a bit, put it to about 14, I would say. We could put the RPM limit up to about maybe 65 and see what parts fall apart. So when parts start to fall apart, there's actually another test you can do. So it still ran, but you see right here, a bottom end part is reducing the mean time between failures. So to test which parts are failing, you pull up, you hit this button right here, test mode, and then it'll bring this version up, which shows you which parts are suffering. So you can put it up just to red line and you say, oh no, my con rods and my pistons are both bad because each little thing represents a different part of the engine. This part is the airflow. So you can see if there's like a part where the exhaust is too small, it'll turn colors and you're like, I need a bigger exhaust on my car. Your Honda Civic would never say it needs a bigger exhaust, trust me. It won't. Just won't. Um, anyways, what was I saying? Oh, so what we're going to do is you get a couple of options. You could raise the quality, which makes parts just more durable, but it's pretty expensive to do that. So we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to use different comp... Uh, Components so instead of cast, uh, we're gonna use uh, not heavy duty cast. We're gonna use forged H beam. No, yeah, we're gonna use forged. Uh, we're gonna use I beam steel actually, because that one's slightly cheaper than the forged H beam, and it has more a uh, better uh, high RPMs, and then lower torque because it's a six I six. It won't make that much torque. And then for pistons, we're gonna do the same thing. We'll just use forged I think because that one has a high max RPM, and I think they're the cheapest. Yes, they are. So that's the quick changes we're gonna make and that'll improve the reliability and if you go to this and do this test again you'll see that they are green which means they are pretty much solid for reliability which is good to, good to have so go ahead and do another test run get some new results you see oh nothing changed because uh, I kinda ran it twice because I went to the, oh well it doesn't matter it's not important it'll be important later because what we're going to do now is we're going to need to, let's see, so since the peak power is at 5,800 RPMs and we got a 6,300 RPM red line, we're going to increase the cam profiles to about 50. What that does, well, let's go 55. What that does is it makes it where the, it'll, the when it's in higher RPMs, it still makes more power, but then it sacrifices lower in performance and economy and the octane rating. So we're doing that, and that gives it, there you go, look at that, it's making 162 horsepower at 6,400 RPMs now. So now we're actually making full use of the power, like the whole big old red line we, we got set up. However, the economy is going down, which is not good. So how are we going to raise economy? Well, we could put less fuel in it. That's one way to do it. We could put the fuel mixture down to about 14.2 maybe. That'll increase the economy a bit. It does reduce the power just a smidge though, but that's okay. And let's see, what else can we do? The ignition timing. That one will increase the economy a bit if we bring it up. So let's put it up to about... 64, I don't know. And it went down. Let's put it down. Uh, 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 let's put it down then. Put it about a 60. I think that might be about the same as it was before, but oh well, it's okay. It, it's alright. It's alright. What else can we change, huh? Let's see. Oh, I know it'll really help the economy. Instead of having a carburetor, go to injection. Yeah, it's a little bit more, but if we use a single point EFI, that'll probably be a ton more gas efficient than a carburetor. It'll probably make a little more power, too. Yep, made a little bit more power, and it's a ton more on the economy. 12.77% versus, I don't know what it was. Or is that an improvement? Or what does that percent mean? It doesn't mean the improvement. It has to do the, the a ratio of sorts. I don't know exactly what that's calculated from, actually. And I'm looking at it. I'm just not sure. So anyway, we still need to make more power, though. How are we going to make more power? Increase the compression ratio. Is it easy way to do it so let's go ahead and increase the compression ratio we'll do 6.2 just put it up a bit because we have a little bit of room on the fuel octane rating and power is up but so is the fuel octane rating which is not so good so we'll go ahead and um let's see what else can we do we got the cam profiles or uh, i think we could now nah, we won't touch the cam profile uh direct acting overhead cam should be enough for this engine so i think this page is pretty much good. Another thing we could do is just make the engine bigger. We could be like, I want big engine, big, big, big engine. It's going to probably be a little too big here, but that's okay. We could make it smaller later. 
Put like that. That should make enough power easy. All right, there we go. Now we have the power, but we lost the reliability. Ah, what a trade-off. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the engine a bit smaller then, or we can see what part's failing if it's obvious. Like, if we do this test and you see, mm, see, those are failing. So that one's probably from the amount of torque it's making. I'm thinking, because this thing is a huge engine, so it's going to make, uh, yeah, 235 pounds of torque. That's kind of a lot, and to make the parts better it's we're already right at the budget you see like literally right on the line for the budget 17 cents more and it's a failure so instead of making those parts better we'll just make the engine smaller to increase the reliability so we'll bring this down to like 3.8 and this one will bring it down to about 3.8 as well and uh, there it goes close enough and how's that do is that fix the reliability whoo we got we jumped right into gold that's not bad uh i mean uh, that's pretty good. Usually, uh, you know, I kind of jump into silver or bronze. We got right into gold. So then it's just a matter of tweaking it to get it up to the, um, what's it called? Platinum level. So you'd be like, okay, what can we tweak? You know, how much power is it making? It's making 244. So can we make the exhaust smaller? No, it'll l reduce the power. So exhaust stays. All this stuff is pretty much ideal, I think. This one is good for power. So that page is pretty good. This page, we could try messing with the fuel mixture, see if we put it smaller or higher, if it makes anything better. So we try a little bit higher. You do a quick test, and if nothing comes up, it basically means your score is worse. So you do another test, score is worse. So somehow we had the perfect fuel mixture already. Don't know how we managed that, but we did. What about ignition timing? What? Is this car, is this car already perfect? That's amazing. Uh, what about RPM limit? Oh, there we go, see? 21 points more. And that's almost a platinum, actually. If we just lower that one more, it might actually make a platinum. So we'll do one more lowering, and that might get us a platinum. Not quite. We gotta tweak something else to get us like a half a point more, because it's rounding up, so it says it's the score, but you gotta actually beat the score, I guess. So we could do, um... Let's see here. Mm, that looks okay. I think we could just make the engine a little bit different in size. And if we just say, let's make it a little bit bigger, give it a little more power, that might do it. There we go. That's a platinum. And that is an example of how you do a scenario. Kind of a long example, right? But I wanted to get it up to a platinum. Just to show I'm not a total idiot, just mostly an idiot. So that's, that's good. We're done. So we can go ahead and hit make it better if we want to improve it, or we can just hit more scenarios and go back. So what is multiplayer? Because that's a scenario, you know, that's a good example of one. We'll build a whole car in a minute, but what is multiplayer? Multiplayer is the same thing you just saw, but instead of predefined requirements, they are randomly generated, and whoever meets them the best is the winner. At least that's what I've read it is. I'm not a big fan of multiplayer games, so I didn't actually use it. I'm just not a multiplayer guy. Anyways, let's go ahead and look at Sandbox. That's where you can build a whole car from the ground up and it's just crazy again the kind of details it has because it's it's more than just the engine it's a whole car you can build I was just showing the engines because that seems to be the most um, polished and refined of them all the, the car stuff is there it's just not quite as good as the engines you know oh real quickly before I um load in my engine I have I just want to mention how you determine if an engine will fit so for this one you see how it has bars that go in three directions one's up one's left and right one's the other left and right you know what I mean, forward and back. Um, one of them's red, that means it won't fit, so you'd have to make it shorter. So you see here it's yellow, that means it will fit, but it's getting close to the limit. And it's more than just the block size, because the block size does determine things, but it also is determined by the stuff you put on the uh, on the block. Like if you put a big old dual overhead cam setup or something, or big old, you know, anything that's, I don't know exactly which one's the biggest, I think, yeah, dual overhead cam is the biggest, just want to make sure. And then you said, let me put a big old turbocharger on it, let me put a big old everything. Eventually, if you put enough big accessories, it will no longer fit from those additions as well. So we're like trying to trying to make it as tall as possible. It doesn't seem like it wants to be tall enough, but they do influence it. Just not right now. <laughs> Alright, let me go and figure out how to load up my car, my engine then. So, be right back still. Alright, so as you see, I have no cars, because every time I make a car, it's like, this is a stupid car, why did I make this? I'm deleting it. I do, however, have an engine or two. They're all variations of the same engine, but we have an engine. We're going to stuff that engine into a car we make just because you've already seen me build an engine in the, um, 
that mission we just did basically or scenario we just did so when you build a car you first gotta choose your chassis type which is ladder or the other one that's not ladder and when i looked at it i'm like what does that mean and it's just different terms that i'm used to that so ladder means body on frame the other one means unibody now if you don't know what that means body on frame means you got a frame of a car oh oh dang that was weird i forgot there's music here you can listen to it real quick Okay, that's all. Um, anyways, what I was saying though is body on frame means you have a body of a car that is placed on a frame. Unibody means that's all one thing, like the frame and the body are one. Where this one, where the other one isn't. So we're gonna make, uh, we're gonna make a fancy car. So we're gonna go a unibody car out of, let's see, should we use, a, let's not use carbon fiber. We're not gonna be that fancy. We're gonna use glued aluminum, which I believe is kind of like what the, um, yeah, the new Alfa Romeo uses actually. I'm not 100% on that. Feel free to say no, that's wrong, Rabbi R, but I think it does. And then we're going to choose the engine placement. If we're making a fancy car, are we really going to want a front transverse setup? Or are we going to want a front longitudinal setup? That's an easy answer. That one basically determines do you want front wheel drive or rear wheel drive. You know which one I want for my sports car. You could also make it all wheel drive, but we're not going to do that. Then the next you gotta choose is the front suspension. Now we only got two choices here. We either got double wishbone or MacPherson struck, struts. Excuse me. We're gonna use double wishbone because you know gotta get that sportiness factor up. You know it gives you all these things. It tells you all kinds of things up here. Let me like show you which ones. Like you know when you're choosing the part, it tells you stiffness, production, production unit, hours. Then it has the weight. Then it has the tooling costs, material. Cost, like so all those things are like material cost is how much does it cost for the things production unit is how many man hours does it take and tooling cost is how much does it cost to get all the things made initially so I'm thinking eventually you might have some like you want your car made in China or made in the USA you get a cheap car that's falling apart you know I, I, at least that's why I guess they have a different thing for production units but I'm not sure on that I'm just I'm just guessing and then anyways we're gonna so we're gonna like I said so that, like oh yeah then it says just things about the um the type of engine placement you choose like if you choose a a mid-mounted longitudinal engine is going to be very expensive to maintain while a, f a front longitudinal one is relatively cheap overall and it has good cabin space and good cooling. Suspension, you know, it tells you like all the same stuff, sportiness, tameness, compactness, and off-road ability. You know, we got the sportiness and the, uh, and the tameness, that's what's important. And then for the rear suspension, you can do a Mustang style and just have a solid rear axle or I think they're actually changing that new one though. I, I forgot. I think they were, right? Or you could actually do it legitimately and you could just say, let's just go all out and have a multi link, which is probably going to be stupid expensive. See, I'm making another stupid car. It's like, this is a fast car. Who's going to buy it? Nobody. This is a fast car. All right, we, of course, we're going to have rear wheel drive. You got to have rear wheel drive. That's the whole reason you choose front longitudinal. Because if you choose front transverse, you're going to get a front wheel drive car. That's not what I want. I want all rear wheel drive. All wheel drive's cool too. But I want rear wheel drive for this one. Then the panel material. So that is the body panels. And said this one was a chassis, this one's a body panel. So we're gonna use Wait a minute. What? No 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 no. Oh weird. For unibody you choose a different material for the panels? But I thought uh Oh no no no, I get it. Panels are built on the okay, I'm just thinking dumb. Never mind. Let's use uh Should we use fiberglass? Is that kinda that's kinda dumb. Let's use fiberglass. We're gonna make a fiberglass car and yeah. Yeah, we're gonna make a fiberglass car, you know? I don't think they really do that anymore much, but we're gonna do it anyways. So then you get to choose a body tire, you know, you can choose a, you know, whatever shape, shape you want. We'll make it very unsuspecting of the fact that it's a good car. You're gonna get the one that looks like a, just a generic little hatchback, kinda looks like a CRX, you know? And then we'll make it look, you know, like, haven't you always said, man, I wish I had a rear wheel drive CRX that had giant, giant over fenders on the wheels and stuff? That's what we're making got to be able to fit a big engine here so you move this back and you see though you could just shape the car is basically what I'm showing it. I'm just like I'm just doing all the things you can to just kind of make it look ridiculous so you can see all the things you can shape it with you could like choose the shape of all the parts some of them you could choose only in two ways some of them you could choose like in four directions it's like this one you see you could choose front back and then up and down as well so we're making like a stupid looking car because that's usually what I end up making accidentally anyways look at that roof line that is the tiniest roof I've ever seen this looks cute we get all that functional rear trunk space. Who doesn't like rear trunk space? I love rear trunk space. That's why I like my RX-7 a little bit more than the RX-8. Oh, look at that. Look at the 
dumbness of this thing. It comes pre-ricered out from the factory. Except it's gonna be hopefully a really lightweight car that'll work great. And it has an old body penalty, so it says, you see it has a safety penalty. I don't care, let's make it like goldish. Oh, you could actually make it gold, I never realized that. Let's make it gold. <laughs> see, this is what happens every time I end up making a dumb car. Then you can add headlights, so we're gonna be like, I want headlights right here. Put the headlight right there. You can resize them, flip them upside down. We'll do whatever you want. You have to like click and drag, so we're gonna put the headlight, big old headlight. Kinda looks a little funky, cause it's on the edge like that. That looks trippy. Like, I'm making this whole thing look trippy though, that's the thing. All right, then we'll make them long. Let's make them long, like, whoa, God, what if I, oh, that actually looks, I mean, it doesn't look as terrible as I thought it would. Let's see, let's do something like this. Ah. How's that? That doesn't look terrible, right? Yes, it does. I can't make a car. Who let me make a car? Got fog lights, too. I want my little, like, rally-looking fog lights, right? This is a rally car, man. I should keep them round. What am I doing? Make them round. You can, you can keep it round by using the, um, diagonal stretchers instead of the up and down so they stay round, see? See, it's like a little rally car reroll. I don't know what I'm making. Like, I have no idea what I'm making. That's the problem. Every time it happens, I'm gonna make something crazy. And then it's like, this is a dumb car to make. I'm gonna put some taillights on it. Put, right, there -ish. And this is probably a bad taillight design that I chose for this car, but that's okay. We can make it work. All right, so we're gonna make them bigger. Now, ro whoops. It looks like eyes. That's a trippy design. We're gonna rotate it like so. That looks terrible. <laughs> let's not use those lights. Those look terrible on this car. Ooh, let's use these ones. Let's do this. We'll do this. How about... Let's have a bar. Like, this is the light bar. That looks a little better. Not good, but it looks better. And then you can put indicators. You know, even though you have some built in the taillights, I don't care, we need more. Yeah. <laughs> this is a dumb car I'm making. But you can, you can do a ton of things. Like, I, the problem is, I'm like trying, it's like a kid who goes to AutoZone, he's like, ooh, look at all this neat stuff they have. That's what I'm try, I'm kind of doing right now. I'm like, look at all this stuff you could put on a car. And then I slap it everywhere where it doesn't even make sense. You could like, I want to put a grill on my trunk. Does that make sense? No. Can you do it? Mm, oh, you can't. Yeah, you can. Look, I want a grill right here. <laughs> Don't do that. That's just dumb. I think they do that so if you have a car that's um mid mid mount mid mounted engine, uh, that actually makes sense. This one's not mid mounted, so it doesn't make sense. Let's try to get a grill that kind of fits a little bit. Front's gonna look okay. The rear is just like oh god. Um, now the front's gonna look like oh god too. That's a trippy looking grill. That looks okay. I mean, it, it doesn't look terrible actually. That time, you got vents. And by the way, these grills and vents are functional. You notice it says effective cooling area. It tells you if they're functional or not. So you could like, you know, it tells you. Like I said, this thing's coming pre-raced, ricered out from the factory. That's the goal here. Oh my god, this is the ugliest. <laughs> I am making such an ugly car. Alright, now we're going to put a spoiler on it. Let's see. Whoa. whoa. Which one do I want? Let's see this. I think this one's the biggest. Oh, by the way, it gets bigger. Uh oh. 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 Oh my goodness. Look at this. That's a spoiler. I think we're making it taller every time, are we? No, we're not. Wait, maybe we are. Ah, uh, no, we're not. There we go. Look at that. It's got that. Um. Super bird inspired uh spoiler. Oh my goodness, this is You know what we also could do? We could put a spoiler next to our spoiler. You could be like, I don't know, I don't know if that's enough downforce to hold this car down. I think it might need more downforce, and you can put another spoiler on it. There we go. There's the downforce. Oh, I think I'm just making it wider, that's what it is. Oh double down on the downforce. And you can flip it over and give yourself lift. Just like, oh man, this is too much downforce. We'll flip it over. At least I think that's what it does. I can't see it. And I never actually click that button for the wings. Then you can put your handles. 
and you'd be like, no, I don't have handles. I got those shaved handles. Or you'd be like, all right, we'll put them right here. It's got kick handles. You kick it, and it opens it up. Right there, there you go. Let's kick them. You kick it, and it opens up the door. You just got to stick your foot in there, and the metal will burn your foot off, and your shoe will melt, and it'll become one with the door, but that's okay. Bonnet. Oh, you didn't need to put the... Look at that. We can put... Oh, look at that. For the turbo, we're not going to add. You know, we can have a big old thing right here like oh yeah that's for the turbo and then what turbo oh I the turbo was cut for costs because the engine we were gonna put in it doesn't have a turbo and then, like I mean, look at you could do so much to the looks of the car you can make it the most hideous car ever or you could actually make it look good I'm not good at making a car look good unfortunately we need exhaust tips you'll be like uh, it's kind of weird to put them on the bottom there we go we gotta have a set for each cylinder Wait, I'm, I'm putting a four-cylinder engine in this, and we're going to have four sets of exhaust. That makes sense, right? <laughs> we need more exhaust. We need, like, a big fat one in the middle, too, right here. Just like, we need a... Oh, it has to be symmetrical? Is there any? Let's see, is it? Uh, I think it might have to do with the car design. I'll put some up here, too. Big exhausts. Big exhaust. Oh, there we go. That's how you only have one. Well, it doesn't seem to work quite, quite as I would expect. Oh, well. That's okay. <laughs> Let's not have that. That just looks really dumb. Like, dumber than the rest of it. Dumb. So how does this exhaust count work? Um, It's a four-cylinder engine we're putting in it, and it has 12 exhausts. I have no idea how that would... Per how that would function at all. Like, there is no logical reason to have that many exhausts for this engine. Alright, so lips. Lips, lips, lips. We can put lips on them. So they can kiss you. You know, who needs ground clearance when you got a lip? Woo! Woo! We're gonna have negative ground clearance with this thing. It's gonna scrape from the factory. It's just gonna scrape along. There we go. Oh! Oh, that went over the lights, though. All right, we'll just move the fog lights up then. <laughs> oh my goodness, who let YBR design this thing? Can, did the exhaust go through the lip? I don't. Oh my goodness, the, the exhaust don't go through the lip. Ah, I think it has to do with the order you put it on, so that's my own fault. We'll put the lip above the exhaust then. Yep. What the? What is this? What have I designed? You can put badges. He like, I'm gonna put my little. My wings on it. You know, everybody gotta know what brand this is. The it's the flying uh, eagle thing. I don't know what the, what's the brand gonna be. I don't know. There we go. That's the car. Now we gotta. I hope the engine will fit. Anyways, we're just gonna try to use the other. I wonder. Can you? How do you load up an engine? Actually, I never thought of that. Can you load up? An engine? Uh, I gotta look into this. Actually, hold on one second. Ah, uh, I found it. I was just clicking through the buttons, and it's like, after you go through the engine section, you could choose an engine. So you go click, 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 and then it's choose engine. So I was like, oh, there we go. That's how you load an engine. So this engine is just, like I said, it's a random engine I made that's like, I want it to have 10,000 RPMs. So it does. You see? If you hit test mode, and then you're like, I w want it to go fast. It revs up to 10,000. Barely. You see, parts are falling apart, but that's okay. Because it revs up to 10,000. Because, you know, like I said, my real car, it ha has a tachometer that goes up to 10. I want this one to be able to have a tachometer that goes up to 10. So that's why I made it where it could do that. And now, we've chose the engine right there. You can choose the uh, gearbox. We're going to have a, you know, a manual gearbox. Why would you have an uh, automatic in this? Six speed is all we need. And then you can choose the spacing of the gears. Like, so the top speed and the, all that. I mean, the, I mean, sorry, not the top speed. It determines the acceleration through the gears and all that. And um, I'm just going to leave it about 50. And the top speed, you could determine it. You know, this thing, it's like 469 miles per hour or so. <laughs> no, it's not. For real, the top speed for something like this would probably be actually right about... Um, you know, it's supposed to be pretty sporty, so we'll just leave it at 155 because that's kind of like the legal limit. Oh, we can't do 155. 156. I mean, yeah, the estimated top speed is a little bit lower, but that's okay. You know? Gotta push it a little harder. And uh, I'm just trying to kind of get all the gears to look mostly equal, you see? 
I've never been good at trans transmission tuning, so we're just going to leave it like that. Then we choose the tires. we got to get those semi-slicks on it. Look at that. Ooh, those are some nice tires. Does it actually change it or no? No. It doesn't change it when you choose semi-slicks or not. I was just curious. One of those things that will probably change eventually. They just haven't thought about it. So we need some fat tires in the back. Wait, that's the front tires. We need fat tires in both then. Gotta put all 220 horsepower that engine makes or whatever up to the ground, you know? It's like such overkill. I don't care. <laughs> well, that might be our designer car. We need bigger rims. Yeah, bigger rims. Gotta get that offset right, too. Well, we can't change the offset at all because the rims are too big. Smaller, we smaller wheels to get bigger rims. Ah, oh, it won't go bigger. How are we gonna get that perfect fitment, though? What am I doing to my poor Yaku? Like, I'm just screwing everything up. That's the problem. Like, don't give me buttons to click because I'll just make cars that are stupid. Let's keep the wheels normal because they actually do affect performance. Let's just give it nice... Not that thick, thick, of, a, thick of a wall, but, you know. Mm, that still looks a little thin, doesn't it? There we go. That's a little bit better. That looks reasonable. Ish. Sort of. Close enough. It's a sports car, after all. <laughs> I don't know. It's like I said, you it's just you could do a lot of things. Oh, we need to stop fast. We don't want no we gotta stop fast. We need those six piston brakes. Total overkill, yes. Race. Okay, not hundred percent race. It's a sports car, not a race car. We'll go ninety on the scales. And all this stuff is kinda a little more harder to to know because this stuff doesn't have those in depth videos and stuff yet. So this one is a lot of me just messing around with things to learn it. Put the disc size as big as we can. We gotta stop hard, man. Alright, so that's as big as they'll go, I guess. There we go. And then we're gonna say under tray. Down force. What should we do? Fully clad. You see, I'm looking at the thing and it's telling me, like, different ones have how much cooling and all that. So we're just gonna hit down force. Cause, like, these parts, I'm not exactly sure how it works. Brake airflow. All the airflow. Front. Like, see, I'm just clicking buttons here. I'm being honest with you. I'm just clicking buttons here. Um, let's do these at... F let's just leave these at 50-50. Because these ones, I'm... I think I know what they do, but I don't want to mess with them. Downforce, on the other hand, we can bring that up to about 100. Okay, that's overkill. How about 75? I like saying I'm going to bring it up to 100. Then I'm, like, thinking, you know, that's really dumb. Let's not do that. So these, see this, this is a, look at this, a five seat, four seater, four seater. So you can see inside almost, look, see those seats? No, you can't see the seats. I know. They put, someday you'll probably be able to, but it's a four seater in the inside, trust me. And it's got that super light interior, which is too, so expensive, I don't care. It's got no insulation, because you got to go fast and got to have that low weight. Quality is top notch. No, I'm just going to leave it at normal quality. You can see, though, how fast quality affects the, uh, stuff though like boom to boom like the production units just jump so ridiculously crazy and then entertainment we got basic that's it power steering sure anti-lock brakes sure we could have all the fancy stuff for the people who can't drive this is the guy who has a car with all that now yeah my other car didn't but my rx8 does and then safety premium because you're gonna advanced because when you're driving this thing you can drive fast and then it's like oh my god who designed this thing it just has power and i'm oh, dead you know so then you choose this stuff for the springs and stuff all of it's passive i don't know if that's because of what i chose or not because i always seem to choose the same stuff whenever i make a car and it's always been like that i think if you choose something else it might not be like that anyways we're gonna put it to a sport no race no sport we're gonna put the sport and then we're gonna lower the right height how's that Ah, just all the way down, yeah. Gotta be scraping everywhere we go. Okay, so now we can test it. So if we click test track, you don't get to drive it, no. I don't think you'll ever get to. It's not a planned feature as far as I know. But you can let somebody else test it and it tells you all the stats about it. So there's two tracks by default. There's the automation track and the airfield track. I don't know what the automation one's based off of for sure. But I'm pretty sure I know what uh, British TV show this one's based off of. So after you choose a track, you can also choose custom ones. I've seen one that was a Nurburgring ring, actually. But for this one, we're going to use this track. We're just going to hit start. And you can hear the car. 
And you can look at all of its stats and stuff. You can see the live data, the telemetry, which are the same thing for some reason. I don't know why there's two separate tiles, but the other ones work. And you can see this track stats, so it says how long it gets through each part and stuff. Then you got the acceleration, so it tells you how good it accelerates, which is okay. Then we got the power, and it tells you, oh, look at all that power it makes. The body bump, which has to do with the uh, tuning of the suspension and stuff, which I'm not going to bother doing because I'm not good at it yet. I mostly learned the engines, okay? And then you got the yaw rate, which is similar kind of stuff. You do it to tune the suspension up. And then you would save your car. Like, this is the, I don't know. Oh, I have not entered the name. Uh, Stock Ricer. Oh, I can't spell Ricer. Ricer, there we go. And that's a car. That's how you make a car. It's done. It's done. You can't click next anymore. You could uh, look at the detailed stats, which tell you all about how the test went on the, the track. And this is like this. You see this? You're losing 6.8% on the tameness factor because you're bottoming out. I don't care, man. I gotta live that low life, and where the driver height's bad, and the wheel, what driver height? You gotta be as low as you can, man. How you want? You want a high driver height? You're crazy. Sportiness? That's also important. We got 60.9. That's not bad. I mean, yeah, it could be a lot better. But look at the way it looks. You ever see a car that has a 60 sportiness rating that looks like that, like an old super racer that's actually fast? No, you haven't, have you? Look at that thing. That is just uh. That car is just screaming kill me like all my other cars I've ever made. That's what they all turn out like. I don't know why. I just end up doing dumb things to the poor cars. Um, Alright, that'll, um... How do you even open that? I just thought about it. How do you have the, the, the like, strength and the leverage to open that handle? Like, you're gonna be like, oh, I can't open this thing. Ay, yeah, yeah. Who let me design this thing? But, like, that's just the stuff I've been doing. I've just been making cars and just having fun with it. And that's... That's what it is right now. Like I said, Tycoon Aspects will come. Not yet, though. I just say what the multiplayer was, right? Hope I did. If I didn't, it's just the scenarios with randomly generated requirements. I think I said it before, just in case I didn't. Um, but yeah, man. This is a fun little game. I mean, I can't, I, I can't wait to get the actual campaign stuff going, though. If there's actually the campaign stuff... I'm going to be doing that too. And I plan to probably do, you know, if you guys are interested, I might do some more videos for it. Um, I don't know what, what I'll do. It could just be doing the scenarios or it could just be YBR designing stupid cars. You know, if you watched it all the way through, obviously you're one of the people who would watch it if I did the video series. So you tell me which ones you think would you'd prefer to watch, you know, me doing the scenarios and actually tuning an engine and doing things properly or me just making stupid cars. They're like, yep, uh, this is dumb. So... Um, yeah, or we could do both. Who knows? But, uh, I like this game. Uh, anyways, until next time, this has been YBR. I'll see ya. Oh, lastly, thank you to the developers for, um, giving me a review copy when I asked for one so I can make this video, man. I wasn't sure if I would enjoy the game as much as I have, but, um, I've been enjoying it quite a bit. <laughs> so, yeah, I just gotta say thanks to them, man. Alright, that's all. I'll see ya.